Your convenience. Okay. Eugene, could you give us your full name and spell it for us and give us the date of your birth and where you were born? My name is uh, Eugene Donald Paulus. I was born in 1940, September 15th. My first name, named after uncle, his name was Eugene. E U G E N E. Your middle name and your last name too. Donald, D O N H A L D, P O W L E S S. And could you give us the name of your parents, Eugene? My father was Mark Noble Paulus, Senior. My mother' name was Margaret Stevens. Okay, and do you know where your parents were born? I believe they were born right here in Oneida. I'm not sure. Okay. On your mother's side, uh, did she have any brothers and sisters? Yeah, she had. She had a couple of brothers and sisters, but they all died young. You know. Could you give us their names? I. I, I can't think of their names right now. Okay. I think one was James. Did you know your um, grandparents on your mother's side at all, or did you know, I, do you know their names? I remember my grandfather. And what was his name? Oh, <laughs> I know his name. <laughs> Ed. I'll think of it later. <laughs> Ed. Ed Stevens, yeah. <laughs> Ed Stevens, yeah. Did, yeah you know, did you know your grandmother's name? No, huh? I never knew her. What about your father's side? Did you know your grandparents on that side? No. Did you know who they were? Did you know their names? Yeah, I knew they were. I knew who they were. Name, their name, John D. Paulus and Elizabeth Paulus Baird. She was a Baird. Elizabeth Baird Paulus, I guess you. Okay. And did your father have any brothers and sisters? Yeah, my father had. Three brothers, I believe. Could you give us their names? Uh, one was Purcell Paulus and Coleman Paulus and Eugene Tracy Paulus. And Coleman middle name was Herbert or his how is Herbert Coleman Paulus. And They had a sister. She she died at childbirth. I mean, she had this child, and she died. I can't think. I, I think her name was Margaret. That was their sister that I know. Of. Was there another and, sister? Uh, uh, my, their sister Ella, Ella, M. Henderson. And on your mother's side, did she have any sisters and brothers? I don't. Yeah, she had some. Sis, she had some sisters and brothers, but I, I think they all died pretty young. Okay. It seemed like they were teenagers, or younger even. Did you Did your parents uh, speak Oneida? Yeah, they both spoke Oneida. Did they teach you to speak Oneida? No, uh, no. On your father's side, did he ever tell you about any of his education background? No, no, he never did. Uh, no, he never did tell, tell me. But his brothers, uh, I think, uh, 
two of his brothers or three of his brothers went, two of them might have went to Pipestone and one went to Carlisle. The youngest brother went to Carlisle. And my aunt, their sister, my father's sister, she went to Hampton before Carlisle, I guess. Okay, what did your father do for, uh, did he work, what kind of work did he do? Oh, he just, uh, all them days he worked in, worked up north in the woods and uh, he was kind of a part-time farmer. He did farm work and uh, I think he worked for the railroad a short time. But he did uh, mostly farming, I guess. Okay, and uh, what about your mother? Did she ever say anything about her education? Uh, she went to the, she went to a boarding school over there in Wittenberg. I think there, there was a boarding school over there. And she went over in Wittenberg. I don't know what year that was, but that was a that was a government school over there. That's where she went. Okay. Did <clears throat> how many uh, brothers and sisters do you have? Uh, I have uh, four brothers and four sisters, and I'm the youngest of the brothers. And the next brother to me or next sister to me would be my sister Margie and my brother Herbert and then my brother Mark he was named after the, our father and then uh, my sister Dorothy she, and then my sister Mary and then my sister Lorraine, she was the oldest of the girls, Lorraine. And my brother Purcell, he was second to the oldest. And my brother John, he was the oldest of all the, of the brothers and of the family. He was the oldest of the family. Okay. When you were growing up, uh, do you remember any, anything that stands out in your memory when you were a child? Where you went to school, or uh, yeah, I, I remember. Uh, I remember coming to school here at this mission, mission school. And I, I, this is where we started <coughs> school, and then uh, from here we went to uh, a Catholic school up on a hill, Saint Joseph. And some St. Joseph, we went to a country school uh, out on County Trunk U and near 29. That was a, I think that school was named L Lenoy. And then uh, from that school we went to uh, Idlewild. That was another school near Seymour. It seemed like we go to, we went to a lot of different schools. Were you living in the same place? All yeah, the time? we we all lived in the same place, and then, and, uh, and we went. And then I went to uh, Seymour Grade School. Yeah, I think that's the last school I attended when I was around here. Did you go to school anymore after that anywhere? Yeah, I went to uh, and my uh, my mother and my sister, my oldest sister, uh, moved to Milwaukee, and that's where I went to school there. Oh, I started high school there in Milwaukee. I was in the middle of fifties, I guess. Remember what high school you went to? Yeah, I went to, uh, at that time, well, it's still called uh, North Division High in Milwaukee. Then I, 
I ended up in a vocational technical school in Milwaukee. I think they call it M MATC now, I think. It was a vocational school anyhow. And I went to school in California one year. In uh, Los Angeles, California, I went there one year. In my early, I think it was around 52 or 52 or 53 that year. That was kind of like a junior high school at that time. When you were growing up in Oneida, did you have uh, running water and electricity? No, no, we all we had electricity, but we didn't have running water or inside <coughs> toilet. We all had to go get our water across the road from us. There was a man that he had a pump, like I guess it was the neighborhood pump. <laughs> That's where we'd get our water. Did your mother work outside the home when you were growing up? Yeah, she was uh, during the war. She uh, she worked in a shipyard over in Sturgeon Bay. I was during the war. That was when all a lot of women worked in the shipyards them days, and she worked up there. And uh, it seemed like my father used to transport transport them workers up there in a bus. I don't know if he ever worked in a shipyard, but I think that's what he did. And my mother worked there, and I guess there's a lot of women worked in them shipyard during the war all over the country, you know. She was a welder, she welded in the shipyard when the Second World War was going on. Did she work anywhere else or was that the only time? Oh, she yeah, she, uh, after, after the war, uh, my father, uh, my father uh, passed away, or uh, he had a, like a farm accident, and uh, I was, I was eight years old when that happened, and we were going to school down here in 1948. It's spring of '48, uh, in May we, uh, we were going to school here, and uh, we had a we had a school picnic at the end of the year there, and. And uh, we went to Bay Beach. Uh, that was a big amusement park in Green Bay here. <coughs> we went to Bay Beach for the school picnic. And, and when we came home, that's when he, he passed away. I, I don't know if he had a stroke or heart attack or just a farm accident. He was, he was out getting ready for, uh, for the planting season of that year. Yeah, and when we came home, he was uh, he was still out in the field where where he I imagine he, that's where he passed away out there in that field. He was, he was plowing. He, he was plowing. He was getting ready for the for the planting. Uh, yeah, that was 1948. Did your parents ever uh, talk about any uh, cultural traditions? No. Uh, my father he used to uh, he used to be in that uh, I forget what they call it uh, it was some kind of a do it uh, when I had a religion traditional religion they used some kind of I don't know a false face mask at that time. And they used to go around. Uh, this man, this man, his name was uh, Eddie Matoxin. There was several Eddie Matoxin, but this man was a lot older than them. He was he was like he must have been older than my father, or maybe older. And they used to have this 
false face ceremony. And I just remember going to one of them, they, they, doctor, they doctor a man on a reservation here. I don't know what was wrong with him, but uh, they went to, they didn't, they, didn't let, they didn't let the kids participate in it, you know, they didn't. We didn't go in, I know I didn't, I didn't go in, but I remember what they were doing there, you know. We'd peek through the windows and see what was going on, you know. <laughs> but that was some kind of Indian traditional religion that they practiced here at that time, I remember. Was there any other kind of cultural things that you remember that they did? No, no, that was the only, that's the only one uh, that I know of that I remember ever doing around here, culture-wise. Oh, okay. mm. Was your father ever uh, politically involved with the tribe? Yeah, he was, uh, I think he was a chairman during the, I think he was chairman sometime in the 30s, as right after we, Right after we became citizens, I guess, or something like that, or he was—I think he was one of the first. Or, uh, if not, he was a chairman during the during that time. Uh, they gave us all the—I uh, guess they gave us the citizenship papers. I guess, or they took us from a reservation status to a—I guess the. Uh, what you call uh, into the mainstream, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> made you a citizen? Yeah, I guess so. They made a citizen. Uh, you know. And he was he was a chairman at the time. And Did he ever hold any other positions, or was it always just chairman? No, I don't. I don't know if he held any other position, positions positions at, at that time that I know. Of, you know, I mean, I think it was just a chairman at one time, and that was a, a must have been back in the 30s, I guess. That was before I was born, and and I just seen pictures of it. You know, and at the, that year before he died, uh, it seemed like he he fell out of a car. And I, you know, I was just think, well, maybe that was, maybe that was part of how he died, you know, you know, like maybe a concussion or related to that accident. Yeah. Was he hurt when he fell out of the car? Yeah, uh, he, he got hurt. He was. He must have got hurt on his head or something, because I remember as a kid, uh, it must have happened in. It must have happened around maybe 1945 or 46, one of them years. I, and I remember uh, him being hurt. Maybe that happened the same year he died. I remember he was bandaged up on the head, you know. And, uh, and, I, and I was pretty small then. I, 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 I figured I must have been around that age because I remember that, that accident he had. Did your father's was his employment mostly farming then? Yeah, pretty much just pretty much farming and uh, logging. I guess he used to go up to the log uh, logging camp. A lot of the Oneidas went to logging up north during the winter months. That's where he went, and then he did farming. You know. See, so when you were <clears throat> you grew up and you went got done with school, and then what did you do? Oh, I went. Uh, I went to. I uh, I bummed around the country a little bit. I went. Uh, I went out west. I went to California. This is after. After school, I went to. Yeah, I went. Uh, I went to California, and I. I couldn't get no job out there in California at that time, so I, I came back to, and then I. I went to that vocational school. Uh, and uh, that's where I took a, uh, I took up welding, a welding trade there. So 
so after I took up that welding street, I, I got a job then. That was in the 58 or probably 58, I think, 58, 57, 58, I think. And I got a, I got a welding job there and uh, after I got out of vocational training school, then I went to American, uh, went to work for American Motors. At that time it was a big, uh, they were considered like one of the big three, like General Motors and Ford and all that. But American Motors, and the, they were kind of an offspring of Hudson and Nash, I guess in them days, you know, the Hudson and Nash automobile, and the American Motor, the Rambler came along. And that, and when I when I got this welding job, I, that's where I got a job there at American Motors, and I was in the nineteen. Uh, what's in nineteen fifty nine? I went to work over there. That was my first real job. Uh, you know, like a good paying job. There were a lot of a lot of Indians from all over the state worked there at that time. There were a lot of. A lot of different Indians from different tribes here in the state worked there. It was a at that time it, it must have been like a boom, uh, you know, like a, like they had in Detroit back in the thirties. You know, where all the all the all the people went to the work in Detroit during the during the I guess in the thirties and or after the war too. They all went to Detroit because then where all the big automobile factories were. And they had some in Mo they had one in Milwaukee at that time and that I remember you know, I heard of you know, I heard of the automobile plants there and I stayed there five years there and yeah, you know, I stayed there at American Motors for five years and then I quit that job. I had an opportunity to uh, start iron working one of my one of my brother-in-laws, he, him and another Oneida man, they were working in, in Milwaukee, and so they asked if I wanted to go to work with them. I said, yeah, I said. So that was in 19, must have been in 61 or 60 or 61, 62 or something like that. I went to work with them on construction, and that's when I started uh, iron working career. Where I started, had you know, where I had a, uh, it was a trade then, you know. Well, welding was considered as a trade then too, you know, like, but not like iron work, you know. Uh, joined the building and trade labor labor movement, you know, uh, labor orga organization. Well, that's where I started ironwork at that time, in Milwaukee. During this time that you were getting these different jobs, did you uh, did you get married at all? Yeah, I got married in uh, I got married uh, 19, 1959, You know, I had a job and everything. I guess and I got married that year. And what was your wife's name? Her name was Annette. And she was from another tribe over in the western Wisconsin there. The, at that time they were known as the Winnebago tribe, but now they're they're known as the Ho Chunk tribe. And did you and Annette have any children? Yeah, we had uh, six kids. We had six uh, we had three girls and three boys. Could you give us their names? Uh the oldest one is uh, Rosemary, and uh, and the second one, uh, her name was Nancy, uh, but she she passed away as an infant. Yeah, I think she was only a, maybe six weeks old, but she passed away. Uh, I think she had pneumonia. They said she had pneumonia. And we had another daughter. Her name was Ella, and she was named after my aunt. Uh, I stayed with my aunt when I was young, uh, pretty young when I was younger. And my aunt, she never had no kids, you know. So 
Maybe that's why I stayed with them. And then uh, had a son named George. And then I had a, another son named Brian. He'd, uh, and then the youngest son, the name is Eldon. Yeah, Br George, Brian, and Eldon. Oh, they all grown up now, you know. In there. Are you retired now, Eugene? Yeah, I'm retired now. I've been retired a year. A year. This year. A year this month. Yeah. Do you have any kind of hobbies or anything? That yeah, uh, I used to like to play ball, softball, and I bowl. And I like to golf. I enjoy golf, and I enjoy pretty much of a kind of physically a activity, you know, like, yeah, I do a lot of, I used to do a lot of bike riding, too. I ride bike, you know, but I'm, I'm no fisherman, I, uh, but I like to hunt. I, 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 I've been, I like to hunt, that's the only thing, but I never, I never like to fish. I mean, uh, I ain't got the patience to fish, so. <laughs> Are your children all uh, grown up now? And yeah, they're all grown up. They're scattered around the state here. And two of, the, two of my boys, they they followed my trade as iron workers. As oh, two okay. two are iron workers. And Do you have any grandchildren? Yeah, I, 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 I lost I lost count of my grandchildren. I got to think how many <laughs> you got. Maybe I. Got. Maybe I I gotta think how many I got. Yeah. I must have about twenty some grandchildren. So I guess we don't ask you to name them, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many I got at the time. <clears throat> okay. Um, when you were when you were growing up, is there any uh, holidays that stand out in your mind that you remember? The holidays that you spent and what you did on those holidays. No, uh, you know that's one thing. Uh, them holidays, uh, it, you know, like kind of, kind of grown up, grown up the way we did. You know, and uh, you know, just my mother and my older sister taking care of uh, three of us, three, th three younger ones, and. Uh, and I guess they try to make a holiday for us, or make make a holiday. But it was, I was new. I was new. We we, we kind of had a hard time, you know. Even though it was, they try to make the best of it, you know. Mm -hmm. We we don't we didn't never went out really big on holidays, you know. I had a holiday dinner, but I I kind of remember remember having many holiday dinners, you know. Maybe Christmas, I. Uh, but the holidays, it was. Do you remember New Year's and how it was spent? Yeah, uh, no, it it uh, it it's the same way. It was just another day, you know. There was no, did no you, big thing. When did I you was, do what they call yeah, Guyan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew, I knew that. You know, all the people used to go around and. Did you ever participate? In yeah, that? we used to go Guyaning because. You know, we, they used to pass out donuts in them days. You know, mm -hmm. and give you, give you like hot chocolate or something. And, and a lot of people used to make donuts, and that's we used to go around hoyaning. We used to go around, kind of greet the new year and all that. You know, that <coughs> we did that. You know, and but that was an extensive or kind of holiday. You know. Yeah. Do you remember any kind of herbs that your parents used for medicines? No, uh, no, not not right off hand. But uh, I know that uh, there was a was a man that used to be. They used to call him Doctor Smith. His name was uh, his name was Jake Smith, and he's the only man that I know in my in my life that knew anything about the this Indian medicine. You know, like uh, you know, they call him a doctor, but uh, he, I guess he. He, he could cure a lot of sickness at that time. And he used to come to the house. 
I remember he used to come to my, come to our house and I, as a kid. I, that was my dad. My dad was still living, and that had to have been in a. It must have been. A, it must have been during the war. But I remember him coming there, and and this, this, he'd always come to our house. And there was a lot of people that used to stop at our house. I can remember different ones and come to our house, and uh, I guess my dad used to. You know, I always invite a lot of people over and invite people over, you know. And, but I remember this, that was the only doctor I, I they, they, uh, they talk about medicine men today, and uh, the, uh, these medicine men today, they, they weren't compared, uh, I wouldn't compare them with what, do, what they have today. I wouldn't compare him with the, what he knew of medicine, you know, mm -hmm. like the different herbs they have, you know, he, he knew it, he, you know, he knew it. And he school around a lot of Indians here in Oneida, and doctor, and, and he used to have a lot of, he used to cure a lot of people. <laughs> did uh, you ever have to go to any other doctors or the hospital or anything, and if so, where did you go? No, we, uh, 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 I only went to, uh, I guess, my, I mean, I was just a kid, I guess, uh, I went to, uh, just to have an uh, Indian hospital, what they call Toma. It used to be a government school, Toma government school, and then they made it into a hospital. And uh, me, and, me and a neighbor of mine, I guess we got pretty sick, we stayed in there a couple months in this hospital, I don't know what was wrong. I never did ask my mother what was wrong with me. But I stayed there, me and this kid stayed there for a long time. And this was at this Indian hospital in Toma, and like, you know, must, we must have been maybe babies, I guess. And, and uh, I, don't, I don't know if I was born over there or not. Uh, I don't recall uh, anybody telling me I was born there, but, but I, had a, I had a hard time getting a birth certificate. And, uh, uh, at, at that time, uh, there was another doctor. Uh, she was a doctor. Uh, they call her Doctor Hill, and I guess she was a she was a midwife, I guess. And uh, that's only that's the only remember other doctor I know. And she was a she was a, she delivered a lot of babies here. I mean, there are people I talk to now, and that they said that was her, their, that was their doctor, her, their doctor, you know, delivered them, you know. And I always thought maybe, well, maybe, maybe she delivered me too. I don't know because she, she delivered a lot of kids right about right around time my age. Her name was Doctor Hill. There used to be an Indian hospital right next door here. I don't know what year that was, uh, but I remember it burning down. This, uh, right next door to this field, right next to this building there. There was a big, uh, I guess it was a hospital. It was a, but uh, then they used it for apartments, and there a few families lived in there. In that corner, it, 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 they made it an apartment, but then, then I remember, I remember it burning down when I was a kid. I don't know how old I, I was going to school down here then at the time, so I must have been just starting school. Do you remember um, how the old village of Oneida used to be? Well, the only thing I remember, old, uh, like this hospital here, I remember that now. It was a big building, it was the biggest, uh, biggest this building here, maybe even bigger. It seemed, well, when I was a kid, that must have been the biggest building I know of, you know. And, and that was there, and then uh, they have these, they had these two taverns down here and below the hill here, and they had two two up on a hill there, and they had a railroad depot there. I remember that railroad depot. And I remember 
I don't remember. I don't remember ever them using it. It seemed like it was. Uh, it seemed like they quit using it then. Uh, during, uh, but uh, but then I remember uh, it was still there when uh, when the war ended. The the war ended. And I remember these guys coming home. And I, I and that that man that man uh, I remember that stood up stood out in my mind and, and I, uh, his name was uh, they called him Domi his name was Roman Doxeter and I remember it was afterward he came home and they were all celebrating and he had a Model A and it seemed like they rolled over in that Model A someplace uh, celebrating being home and. He was standing up. At that time, they didn't have the metal roofs. It was kind of like a, I guess they call it like, like a tar paper roof. They had them, the Model A cars them days, you know. And, and I remember him he, coming through an and they they were He was standing up, and he was standing up in the, in that Model A, standing through the roof like you know, because they must have broke the roof when they rolled over or something, or they got an accident or something. And uh, but I remember him. Uh, he was a uh, well. He he was a big man, uh, and he he looked bigger. Than he, he looked pretty big in them days, and I mean, he, well, he was a big man, and I guess. Uh, and then after a while, I heard that. A couple of him and his brothers, they. They they served in uh, North Africa, I guess. He had a couple of brothers. Uh, I think they were older than he was. He was the youngest of them brothers, anyhow. He had about three, four brothers. And that's the only thing I can remember that really out. I could always remember that outstood when I was that small. And them, them guys, uh, them guys coming home from the service and celebrating and. Yeah, I remember, and, and this. There's some, there's some men used to stop at the house. We lived right on a the corner there in Oneida, there, up in County Trunk U. And Jay there, and there were a lot of people uh, used to stop at the house. I remember the kid they used to come visit. Uh, in them days, uh, you know, we, people visited one another a lot. You know, well, yeah, we didn't have no. We didn't have no television or nothing. We just had radio, you know, and stuff like that. So people visited a lot, you know. You used to come down here, and they used to have card parties down at this parish hall. I remember that as a come as a kid there. We come down there, and they they'd have square dancing down here, and a lot of the old timers would come in there, and they. I'd always remember this one man and this one. His name, this, this man that used to call square dancing, his name was uh, Alphys Christian. He had a big voice. He, was, he, he had a deep voice, and well, he could really, he could really call that square dancing music out. And, and they all sang it in Oneida. And and there was a, this woman, I can always remember her. Her name was Sarah, Sarah King, and she used to sing. They used to sing. Uh, them square dances songs and and I always used to make me I, it still makes me laugh today when I used to think of them people uh, it used to they used to sing that song coming around the mountain in Indian and I used to think that was, that was pretty pretty neat to it I, I could still see these people you know how they used to come to square dance and just uh, there was an old man his name was Franklin Doxter he used to play the violin or fiddle, they call it, I guess, the violin fiddle. Or whatever. But I remember he used to be there. And they used to, different ones used to play the fiddle over there, in the different Oneidas and at that time. And it must have been. Uh, it must have been during uh, must have been during the war when they when they had them things done. I could cause I remember that. Did they have a lot of those dances. Yeah, see, when they have they used to have uh, like uh, like card parties, you know, like they used to have card parties and have 
bring pies and like box lunches, I guess, you know, they, or they raffle out these pies, you know. But I could always remember them square dancing in that big hall over there. <laughs> and this, this, this old man, he was, uh, he was, he was quite a, he was quite a character. He this old man, but he, he knew how to call the square dancing. Cause he was, it's too bad they didn't get no record of him calling, because it was all, it was all this, all this in Oneida. What was your church affiliation? Well, that was we started out down here just uh, Episcopal, Episcopal. I guess a lot of all the Oneidas were Episcopals at that time, and <coughs> Methodists, and that was two main churches here. And a Catholic church was here too, but there was only there was only one or two families belonged to that Catholic church, and then the Lutheran church. There was a there was a few families belonged to that Lutheran church too, not not. Uh, but this is a this Episcopal church. This was a, kind of a, the main uh, the main church, be and the Methodists they were they were kind of the most most biggest churches around at that time, and then uh, and then the year my uh, my dad died. Uh, uh, these uh, these Mormon missionaries came here. They got uh, they got ch chased out of Shano. In them days, uh, that religion wasn't too popular. They got chased out of everywhere they went, and, and they got ch they even got chased out of Green Bay. Them days. So, uh, like the Indians, they all I guess the Indians all took everybody in. So. That's when the missionaries they came here, and my dad and my aunt took them in. They, you know, they invited them in, and that's how. They, so then we eventually me and my. Uh, well, I guess I was the only one at that time became a member of that church, uh, Mormon church at that time, and and that's how uh, that's how I remember them coming here because I remember the. They had a hard time starting here, starting in this part of the country. It's now I guess it's it's different now, you know. But they they used to in them days they used to stand on a street corners and preach, you know. And and that's why they I guess that's why they got chased out of Green Bay. And so they came to Oneida here, and this is where they they kind of started to started their church here in Oneida and that was in sometime in 1948-49 and uh, the man <coughs> they, they built a the reason why I remember because I, I used to go there and they start and they uh, they start they built a chapel up here that, that chapel is still standing there and one day, I remember, because I remember the kid, we used to go there and we used to play, play there and we used to go to church there and, and they used to have a lot of kids go over there when they were smaller and, yeah, and then, and anyhow, this, uh, when they come dedicating that church, uh, I was just a kid when that happened, but uh, the man that come dedicated was his name was uh, Ezra Taft Benson, and he was a secretary of agriculture under Eisenhower. He was with the Eisenhower administration at that time, and he came here to dedicate that chapel. I was just a kid then when that happened, and that's where uh, that's where. It, I start going to church. You know, well, I went to church down too here. We all went. Every, it seemed like everybody went to church down here one time or another. I don't remember. <coughs> we used to go to. A, we used to come march across the street, go to church, and we used to have some kind of class. Uh, you know, we just go to church. Uh, I don't know, was every day or I can't remember. But we used to go in and have have service in that big stone church at that time when we were kids. We used to come across from the school there. 
What do you think about the uh, elderly per capita that we get? Oh, I, I never really looked into the per capita, any of that too close, you know, I mean, it's, uh, I was think. I mean, my thought of it is that uh, we should always take care of the older people first. I don't know, because them are the ones, them are the ones that went through the hard times coming from New York. You know, they, we came from New York and they, and all our older people, uh, uh, they raised they raise families during the Depression, you know, and a lot of the, and a lot of these, a lot of these kids were, when they were kids and during the Depression, they're living today now. And I always think that uh, you all should take care of them first, you know, your elderly people, you know. They're the ones that laid the groundwork for coming here, you know. And all the people, I, I, I used to remember a lot of old, old timers in them days, you know. I remember the people were having meetings, you know, the different people throughout the reservation. What do you think of the uh, programs that they have for the elderly? Do you participate in any of them? No, I don't. I don't participate in too many of the elderly uh, right at the moment because you know I don't think I'm old yet. So <laughs> <laughs> I said, but uh, they, they, I, I guess they, they have a lot of uh, you know. It, it's good. It's good. Any, anything you know, uh, the elderly. You know, I mean, uh, you know, like uh, having them being active. You know, that's one good thing that they. They could go places and visit different tribes and different people. You know that that's good. You know that that's they should keep try to keep the elderly. They should try to keep the elderly out of these nursing homes as much as they can. You know. You know that I think uh, I could I visit a couple elderly in a nursing home and uh, boy I I wouldn't want to go there. I I think they have a. They have a tendency to give up on living. That's what I, I mean, that's my only opinion, you know, that. But it's good that, uh, I mean, we have these nursing homes. I mean, I guess we're always going to have to have them nursing homes. But, but I think uh, they should keep the elderly more active I and mean, try to do, keep them more active as, you know, because they don't visit like we used to. I mean, when I was a kid, we, I remember I was taking my aunt and uncle. We'd also go visit here, visit there. We seemed like we'd be visiting all the time, you know. And people don't do that no more, you know. Even your own relatives don't come visit you, you know. And I see the I see the change, and uh, the only time we get together is a wedding or a funeral, and then you don't see nobody no more for. To the next wedding, and you know, and, but I remember we well we got television now and everything. Everybody's busy now, you know, but but I was I was I was glad that uh, I was I got to know a lot of a lot about the Oneidas and my, my you know being with my uncle and aunt. They'd always tell me. I always used to wonder why they'd be telling me things, you know, and, and it seemed like uh, but I. And I was seemed like I, I must have listened because I know a lot of a lot of history what went on here. What, what they told me, I would have never known if they didn't tell me. And uh, but they uh, and I used to think back. Uh, oh, why are they telling me this? Now I know why they told me this. Now I understand why they were telling me this. You know, like they were telling me the history of our people and. And the only way they told me is like, you know, they told me about different things that happened or, you know, different, mm -hmm. different parts, you know, and uh, they told uh, who all went to school and where they went to school and a lot of our elderly people at that time, they all went away to school. So they used to tell me and, uh, how they went to school away from here and took their, took their language away from them, you know, and, and, and I guess, uh, I guess that's why they never talked our language to us, you know, because they didn't, because they all said they were punished, so so I suppose keeping us from being punished, you know, 
They didn't, you know, we always had to go outside or, you know, we never, we could never sit in the house and listen to them because they'd have visitors, they're talking. They always talk, my, my folks, always, I could always remember them talking when I don't know. But why I didn't learn, I don't know. <laughs> Did you ever hear about the New York land claim? Yeah, I used to hear about them. I, I used to hear about that, that New York claim. You know, my my father worked on that. And that was, that was like, like, like that was in a, back in the 30s. And I knew people that, I met this old man. He said he drove my father to New York one time and worked on them claims. And this old, and this old man, when I, he's telling me he was old. So that had been quite a few years ago, you know. And, when they worked in that New York claim, and and uh, that uh, that man name was Lloyd Skendor. I think that was, I think that your uncle uh, or somehow. Yeah. And uh, he he told me when I met him in a nursing home. I went to visit somebody in a nursing home, and and he was telling me that he 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 drove my father to New York one time <laughs> on that New York claim, New York land claim. <laughs> so that's how long it had been going on. So. I mean, I don't know, they say we're going to get paid off, and I don't think in my lifetime either. <laughs> That's what everybody says. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, uh, you know, in New York, uh, you know, the, I don't think there was, you know, uh, uh, my opinion now is like, uh, we should never trade that land for uh, casino rights, you know, as land is, that's what they're fighting it over land over in Israel and all them places. They're fighting land over land, a strip of land, and then we we're giving our land away almost. You know, the land is land is valuable. If you were going to uh, tell the children today anything, what would you tell them? Oh, what kind of um. Uh, what do they call it? Advice. Advice, yeah. What kind of advice? Would oh, you give well, them? I'd tell them to. Uh, I'd tell them to get an education, get a good education, uh, because education is uh, that should be on a top priority list with the elderly. You know, I, I wouldn't. They got to be both on the same level. I, I, education and. Uh, Helping the elderly, that should be on the same level, and and uh, and uh, I see a lot of young kids too. They don't respect the elders like they should, you know. I mean, when I was a kid, it was almost automatic. You respect elderly people, you know. It's something you didn't to you weren't told. You you didn't you didn't you didn't have to be told to do that, you know. You automatically did it. That's the way they that's the way they raised us, you know. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd tell these young kids, uh, I mean, uh, get, a, get a good education, and uh, if you don't get a higher education, get a kind of a trade, you know, like mason, you know, like we have a lot of masons and carpenters uh, on our, our, and that was all learned at uh, these Indian schools, you know, Carlisle and Toma and all these Indian schools, Hampton, that all these trades were, that's where they're, that's where they began, you know. And that's where, that's where the Oneidas became farmers, at them, because at, at that uh, at the at that school there, they it was a turn of the century there, and they were taking us off reservations to get us in the mainstream, which was probably the, the best thing they ever did, as the best thing for us. But even though we didn't want to agree with it, you know, but they didn't know down the line that they were helping us. Do you think it's um, easy to live a good life today in Oneida? Well, it's, uh, I have to say yes or no on that. You know, it, it depends. Uh, it all depends what kind of values I have in, of uh, growing up. You know, like uh, value of uh, like a lot of people. Uh, they don't go to church like they used to, you know what I mean? You know, and kids, we all seem like we all are going to church someplace. 
Yeah, that's the way we brought up, you know, we went to church and, and did things like that, you know. And, uh, you know, like, I think it should be easier today because they got everything right there. They got everything. They got, they got, uh, they got opportunity, education opportunities. They got transportation opportunities, you know. Like, uh, we all seem like when, we, when our father died, we, we were all hiring somebody to take us to Green Bay even, you know. We always we always had to ask somebody for a ride, because we didn't have no car at that time, you know. And so we always had to ask somebody for transportation in days. And nowadays, uh, you know, these old timers turn over in their grave. You see, the buses go to Green Bay and take you to Green Bay, take you all over, you know. That. And that was hard them days, you know. Uh, you know, to get trying, you know, and and and, and uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, when I was thinking when I, I was out. I was out with a car, without a car one time, and uh, I was hated to go ask somebody for a ride, you know. And I imagine they were the same way too, you know. Uh, you know, you always hate to ask somebody for a ride, you know, because I don't know, uh, but being too proud or proud to, <laughs> whatever, you know. Yeah, there, uh, this. Uh, I don't think it's. They got all the ball fields here now. They got all the sports activities here. With, but they never had before when I was a kid, you know. But they, I mean, they had a ball diamond here, you know, and then they had a few ball diamonds all around, you know. And they had the ball diamond at CC camp, and but that seemed to be faded out for a while there, you know, faded out quite a bit, you know. And, but this, uh, yeah, they have about three, four, uh, one, two, two. Uh, Two hardball diamonds that I know of back here behind the church here in uh, the CC camp, and then then they had a couple of ball diamonds up on the they also call the other end. <laughs> that is, they had ball diamonds down there. Who was the most influential person in your life? In my life, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, I have to say my my older brothers, you know, because I always remember. And my, my uncle, it, it it had been doing them, th my older brother, my older brothers, and my uncle. And my uncle, you know, he he used to get me up. Uh, he used to get me up five o'clock in the morning, even on weekends, you know, or even all the time. And then I didn't figure it out till. And then I I read this. I read the. Uh, I read the. Uh, I read some books about Carlisle and. That guy was a military man that started at Carlisle Institute, and, and that's the way it, all these Indians got trained. They were military trained in that school, you know. They, and that's where we, we got haircuts, you know. And them days, uh, like when I was growing up, my 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 hair had hit my ear, you know. My, my uncle, you get a haircut, it looked like a bum, you know. <laughs> so, and you didn't have long hair in my day, you know. Because then, then I, I figured, you know, uh, well, this man that started that, I think he named Pratt or Platt, started that Indian, that Carlisle, and he was a military general or something. And that's how they, and they cut the, they even put him in military uniforms there. You know, they were dressed in military. And, and that a lot of a lot of our Indian people, they, they used to dress up, you know, uh, they, they used to be dressed up. <laughs> And I remember these old timers just coming by the house, and they they'll be dressed up. You know, they'll be just going to the maybe corner bar, but they'll be all dressed up. And them days, they they all wore white shirts and nice dress pants. You know, and that, that was because they were they all they were all trained that military style. You know, the house used to. And then when when I stayed there, when uh, my aunt took me in after my father died, and oh, I used to with the big house that they, they lived in, and I. I just remember as a kid, I used to scrub them floors there. Every weekend, every week, they had them, that, that whole house had to be scrubbed, you know. And, and them days, uh, I'd wash, I'd, they, my, my aunt and uncle were old, so I did a lot of the washing, and uh, boy, I had to, I think we even ironed the sheets in the pillowcase them days, you know. <laughs> nothing went on, on you know, nothing went wrinkled then. That's the way, because that's, then I, I realized that's the way they were brought up, you know. 
But uh, I did all that, you know, so. Those, we have one minute left okay. on tape in case you're interested. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to? No. Uh, well, I want to thank you for.